I'm Isander. And I'm Coda. And today we are going to be going over the winners, the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard. Oh yeah, they snuck it in. They literally the, snuck it in. The White Scars ran right into a trap. They're gone. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. We are now in the loser's bracket, and so you have the choice of the White Scars, the Abhumans, Caiaphas Kane, and the Dark Eldar. Those are your four options. Sound off in the comments. Uh, the other one will be stuck in the loser's bracket. Fighting for their lives. The losers, again. losers bracket. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm gonna have a rule. Three times. If you wind up in the losers bracket three times, that's it. You're done. You're finished. You're going somewhere else. You clearly need a minute to cool off. But those are the options: the white scars, the abhumans, the dark eldar, and Caiaphas Kane. So sound off in the comments on the video you want made. As always, you know. All the stuff the machine gods like. Subscribe. You know, we, we are but humble servants to the Omnissiah. Mm -hmm. And if you want a bonus episode every single week, as well as a bunch of other perks, access to the Discord, priority voting, it goes on and on and on, make sure to head on over to patreon.com slash Coda, where you can help us keep all of these lights on. There are so many of them. And get... And there may be more. And there may be more. And get twice as many episodes every single week forever. And now, with that said, let us get into the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard. The stealthy Space Marines, let's call them. Well, it, they're still Space Marines. <laughs> they are still very large. You can't miss them. Well, they have a whole thing where you can miss them visibly. They're very good at hiding. But if one is standing directly in front of your face, you can miss them. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it, Corex had the ability to do that specifically. Uh, you could be standing right. It wasn't hard invisibility. He just. It reminds me of um, that old YouTube experiment where. Oh yeah, he did. Can you spot the gorilla? Can you spot the gorilla? Yes. Yeah. And a full blown silverback walks through the stage, and these people are just passing a ball, passing a ball, passing a ball. You're so busy counting the passes that you miss the silverback. They just walked past. No, if I remember correctly, it was like people in red morph suits and people in like uh, uh, blue. Oh, morph it's been suits. done in every color. And they're just like, okay, count how many times the ball gets passed to someone in blue, and you're like, okay, so I've got to pay attention to every single blue person. They're all miss, shifting around. You miss the guy and in a gorilla costume. You miss the dude in a gorilla costume. It's just like, like he's like literally, he's doing a little ditty. He's just like. Well, if I remember correctly, he does like the full like chest beat and then like leaves. <laughs> but regard, we'll put we'll put some B roll up of that. But regardless, it's kind of like that, yeah. where he, he could sort of fade away into the background. However, for the rest of the Raven Guard, the best way to paint a picture of how subtle they are is to bring back the greatest of all time from retirement. The one, the only, poor Stooge. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, He's back. He didn't get eaten by Tyranids. Exactly. Except uh, poor Stooge is a planetary governor in charge of the planet, and he has decided to fall to chaos this time. Things are going great. He's a traitor now? Yeah, he's a traitor now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, he's, he's going to go through several things in life. Poor Pe Stooge. People like him, so it is unfortunate for him. Regardless, he falls for chaos, hook, line, and sinker, does the whole nine yards. I'm talking refuses to pay his taxes, starts putting up effigies, stops showering if it's Nurgle, starts doing the unthinkable if it's Slanesh. To be fair, he was, if I remember correctly, he was still doing the unthinkable. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But, so he's doing the whole nine and he's also shoring up defenses because he knows for a fact that his planet is A, important, and B, the Imperium does not like it when you skimp on taxes. <laughs> you do not mess with the IRS. And so any minute now, the God Emperor's sons will be here, so we need to brace for it. And so they brace. And so they prepare. And so they have a bunch of chaos cultists. It's a whole thing. The planet turns effectively. And nothing happens. Nothing. No drop pods from space, no glorious... No, mm, no, no big violence? No orbital of bomb orbit, nothing. No 40,000 Warhammers? And they, no, and they should have been here by now. The, the word has spread, it should be done, and so... Where is everybody? Right? <laughs> you spend the time, hung, he spends the time hunkering down even further, reinforcing his walls, just getting prepared, and one day, as poor Stooge is making the rounds, suddenly three of the four major walls explode. Are all in sync. Suddenly, all the citizens who you thought were falling for chaos, and it's great, it's fantastic, we're all on the same page, a huge chunk of them have taken up arms, 
and are leading fights in your streets. Oh. And this isn't, oh, haha, they have picked up their brooms and they're sharpening them. No, how do they have imperial weaponry? And how did their aim get that much better? Yeah. So we've got like full on Minutemen coming out of the, the woodwork? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Full blown civilian militia. A, a well regulated militia is uh, what happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and that is before we even get to the fact that you have a command structure, you know, you have you, you have meetings, yes. you have people you trust in, you mm -hmm. have a hierarchy. I am in charge of this, and then he reports to me onwards and upwards and onwards and upwards, and they have all died. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> they have all died hmm. and been ripped apart. Are we sure I'm not dealing with night lords here? No. No? No. No, I'm not sure. Ripped apart. Ripped apart. Not flayed. Okay. Oh, big difference. Big difference, big yep. difference yeah, right? Yeah. Regardless, okay, this is bad, this is bad, but I can fix this. I'm the guy in charge, thinks poor Stooge. And so he radios in, call in an airstrike. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Nope. Somehow all the ammunition's missing and the gun's jammed. I was going to say, did he not have enough kills for the streak? No. Oh. Somehow it just doesn't work it's and doesn't his communications work. are jammed and this keeps happening over and over and over. Everything is sabotaged. How are they everywhere all at once? And then and only then do you see a large man wearing a jetpack and Wolverine claws leading the charge and an emo cut oh yeah oh well the emo cut comes in later the because now that your anti-air defenses are uh, destroyed and your airstrikes are destroyed a bunch of ships full of space marines arrive now here comes the drop pods and the violence all playing numb and they proceed to win the day at a startling speed speed is not their forte per se however <laughs> when you have a jet pack attached to you of course you're going to go a little bit faster than you're normally able to go yeah and that's that's what a raven guard really insurrection is the best word for it looks like because that's how they fight i mean it's very clandestine guerrilla just like mm -hmm. okay let's get this all started mm -hmm. It, it's and then they set up all the pieces and the plan to get everything down. It's it's very much the guerrilla warfare playbook where you are winning because you know the lay of the land and you have the people's hearts, but they do not know the lay of the land. As it turns out, their scouts arrived ages ago and have just been quietly mapping it out. Their scouts were there before you were there, just mm -hmm. in case somebody might set up there and be a traitor. Oh, one of my favorite stories is how uh, there are these people who are being just beaten back by orcs and there is this woman who does not give up hope and keeps on sending out messages praying for the raven guard to arrive specifically or his ravens and everyone is like you look if space marines were real they would have come by now we're boned just accept it and she keeps praying every single night and then suddenly a military because military grade is not the right word but Clearly, a military stamped package arrives full of provisions at the front of the cave they're hiding in. No alarm, just they woke up one morning and it's just like, oh. And they're there. Wow, look at this. And that's the kind of stuff the Raven Guard do. It's so neat because they there is the, the stealth aspect. There's a little bit of speed. But then there's also, they will genuinely work hard to get ingratiated with the people there. And then train and equip them to become this horrifying fighting force. And if not that, give them gifts of provision while they're sleeping. No, I mean, they just have to... If if I'm not training you, I just need you to live long enough for me to deal with the problem. And so you need food medicine? Oh, that arrived in... This just in. Santa Claus is a Raven Guard space marine. If he was ever any chapter. If he was ever any chapter, he'd be a Raven Guard. Now what is he preparing us for? <laughs> <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to the war on Christmas uh, <laughs> it's either that or Santa's an ultramarine because just the logistics, the logistics of getting are... everywhere come on but bar that I bar mean that, it would work with the whole elf situation yeah oh dear <laughs> bar that yeah he's, he's that's that's a very good example of the raven guard but you know if Santa was Wolverine they're not 
patricians. They're not. We will lead through planetary reform. No, that's your job. No, 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 no. You have a despot. I will deal with the despot. And then you have to figure it all out. After I'm a that. really good assassin. That's what I do. Yeah. You will figure it out afterwards. Yeah. And this has always been in their core. Every 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 Space Marine Legion has a, a thing at their core that they are built around almost. And this was the case for Korax, who landed on this tiny moon that was orbiting a planet that was run by robber barons, for lack of a better term. Just the super industrialist. They run, might, not might makes right, but net worth. Net worth makes right. Net worth dictates your worth, quite literally. And so... You would be worked to death, and if that did not work, then you would be moved to this moon as a dissident. Eventually, that level of efficiency and just labor exploitation, really, caught up with them, and they stripped the planet clean. This is something that can happen in 40k. They're very efficient. They have some crazy tech. Yeah. Thankfully, that prison moon they happen to have has a ton of minerals. And there's prisoners already there. Start strip mining that one while you're, while you're over there. Yep. And more people are being sent there now for anything. Just because, well, now the moon needs labor. So that's where they'd go. Uh, thankfully, a drop pod crashed there with a child inside. Wow. Mm-hmm. Thanks. It's, it's, it's a the, kid. It's the, well, actually, the nice thing is the, the, the prisoners, those who are kept there against their will, uh, kept him hidden from the overseers because they thought, well, maybe let's not turn in Kal-El to the authorities. <laughs> you know, let's not. It, it'd be I was going to say, I was gonna say that, sto- like, that is making me realize that that story could have gone a whole lot differently. But then again, Megamind exists. We've explored this. We well, know what happens. Yeah, it's like if Martha Kent saw Superman's pod and called the feds. And it's like, oh... Let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> just adopt him. Treat him as your kid. I don't know. Just, let's, let's. Superman? No, mm. that's super weapon. Actually, I, I've always loved uh, Red Sun Superman. I haven't seen Red Sun Superman. It is the Communist Party in Russia found him first. I, I know what it is, but and I just He took seen up it, Stalin's yeah. beliefs. And it leads to this really fun, fun, fun dichotomy where you have. He's still the same person. It's not Superman, but frowny face. It's still Clark. But what he thinks is right is the state owning everything. Mm -hmm. And only they can actually accurately distribute resources for all of you, the peasantry. And so he winds up fighting for that. And I know, I'm grossly oversimplifying communism. That's not the topic of this video. Oh, Stalinism. Whatever. What matters is that is the belief system he happens to adopt. The reason I love that version of Superman is the moment he's shown that this does not work specifically like the Stalin variant of it, mm-hmm. like the, 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 the Red Scare era he was raised in kind of ideals fall apart and he's shown the, the truth, justice, and the American way. He, <laughs> he, he does renounce it and switch over to being the regular, you know, yellow, red, blue Superman we all know and love. This just in, fate's, fate's strings are just, he is sewn into America. It's more he's sewn into being the best. Like, Clark is just a good, goofy guy. And that's a a thing a lot of Superman movies miss, is he's just a genuinely good person. I mean, that's the point of Superman, is he's a guy. If he wasn't super strong, he would still go out of his way to help people. He just happens to be super strong. This is a guy who has described the whole world as feeling like cardboard around him, and he just has to carefully modulate everything he does for every moment he's alive while he's interacting with everyone and sometimes everyone is trying to put him through a brick wall and kill his wife he's just a good person and that's why i love superman a lot because you know not everyone can have both their parents slaughtered and still have a billion dollars to sit on comfortably go go somewhere learn martial arts come back i am vengeance not all of us have that but all of us can be good to the best of our abilities and some of us will be capable of being far more good because we have more abilities or more resources. And some of us won't, and that's fine. And that's why I love Superman Just so be much. the best you can. And then come mm-hmm. home and, like, chill and watch Netflix with your wife, Lois Lane. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so Korax is is a very similar situation to that where it's 40k it's going to get darker but <laughs> it's 40k it's, he's not going to get the whole truth just let me just spoil that for you no the closest thing we have to that is Vulcan maybe <laughs> maybe uh, <laughs> and so he's raised by these people and they Give him the name Corvus Corax, which in their language means deliverer or savior. It's, 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 it's he's, you can see. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. We can't just have a different language for everything. Let's just make it so it just means Crow Crow. I, I, they wear what they are on the sleeve, and that's why I love 40K. Corvus, okay? Corvus Corax is Crow Crow. Just, he's Crow Crow, okay? Mm-hmm. And using that ability I mentioned way in the beginning of being... Visible, but not like like the gorilla in that situation. He's he's he was born the gorilla walking in the middle of the frame. He sabotages prison gates. He stockpiles weapons. He trains them up because you have to remember, Primarchs have a natural. It's the same way everyone has a natural thing they click with. For example, you are much better about physics than I am, and I'm slightly jealous. <laughs> it's very cool. I am better about public speaking and that kind of thing. We all have our own things that are. Personality matrix allows us to click with and learn very quickly. Uh, all the Primarchs have personality matrices that usually make them very good at strategy. Different forms of strategy, but usually a form of strategy they will almost come with from birth. So he came with a few chapters from the Art of War around just leading a rebellion, pretty much. Gilliman was given, he was in, he was born with the inborn ability to do the testudo formation. And Corvus Corax is like, I'm going to hit you really hard and then run away. And then like two weeks later, you're going to realize what I hit you with was a bomb and you're going to blow up your entire armory by mistake. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens. Smash, cut, he frees every single prisoner. He causes this massive uprising. And I kid you not. They happened to store nuclear weapons next to the maximum security prison mine, which he then gets his hands on. (laughs) So, yeah. So we're saying this is like John Brown on so many steroids and exposed to Lincoln Park. Yeah. (laughs) And right on cue, the emperor arrives and sees, dang, Okay, you're doing great. You are doing fantastic. And this immediately endeared him to Korax. Uh, it also, he also inherently trusted him a lot more than the other Primarchs right off the bat. Really? Uh, he's one of the few who knew about chaos. From the start? Mm-hmm. What, did he just like look out the window of his pod and go, oh, someone's carrying me somewhere? Hmm. Mm, no, no, the Emperor just explained it to them. Oh. Like, like the Emperor trusted him with that knowledge, and we're not sure why, but he was trusted with just, it. Just because why not? Okay. Exactly. And the Emperor got to see Korax win, uh, free the people, and the moon was renamed to Deliverance. It's a really cool name. It's a really, come on, come Deliverance on. Deliverance is just a cool name for yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. And um, the overlords back home just became a compliant forge world. <laughs> because... It is what it is. The Emperor is here now. You don't get to be a robber baron. He's the ultimate robber baron. Get bent. I mean, it's kind of... That's kind of the point of the whole crusade is I don't care what you think you have going on. I have a much better idea. You will join me or die. You are me now. Thank you. Yes. And if you're not me, well, well, there is only me. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. Speaking of the Emperor, because only the Primarchs were stolen, the Legion stuck with him. And so the Raven Guard have always had the name of the Raven Guard, but under the Emperor, they were a bit meaner. How so? They were his Gestapo. Ah. Yes. They were his secret police, police, his eyes and ears. He would try and negotiate with you, and if that didn't work, oh my God, somebody broke into your home and killed you? (laughs) Ah, how did that happen? Hmm. So meticulously. (laughs) And, And so that would always happen to everyone, because you have to think about the level of coordination the Emperor has to put forth for a war on a galactic scale on every possible front. I don't have time for you to say no. 
Yeah, yeah. The real option is yes or mysteriously perish, and then the next person better say yes. We're on the same team because if you try to create another team, oh, God, that's going to be such a hassle, dude. Yep, and so their tactics at this point were really a lot of infiltration, uh, a lot of deep, deep, deep cover work, and then they would kill who they needed to in a very spectacular fashion, usually. They were... They did not have their whole deliverance aspect. They did not have the whole fighting for the little man aspect. That came when they met their Primarch. Yeah. Before that, they were pretty close with the Night Lords, honestly, <laughs> as far as as far as everything went. They were just one shade off from the Night Lords. Yeah. And this is best exemplified by the fact that they had open-air prisons for people. Prison camps. It, it was really no nice way to put it. The Raven Guard back in the day were not great. Mm. Uh, they they have this belief where, or they had this belief where, once you beat someone, you have to watch them like a hawk. But they're not hawks, they're ravens. Man, bird's a bird, bird's a bird, doesn't matter. <laughs> and so the point is basically, you have punched him in the face. Never expect a man to just lay there and take it, which is a fair ethos. The problem with that ethos is the result isn't lock him in your basement and watch him forever. That's not, that's, <laughs> the reason that ethos exists is because you want to think through things carefully. You never want to take the path of most aggression with other people because it may come back to bite you someday and honestly wound someone's ego there's very little that can outdo, undo that. Well, they really did read Sun Tzu for this. Yeah. Because that, like, almost directly follows the allegory of just, like, the general who, like, made it look like his fort was stocked with a full army when it was just him in there. Yeah. No, it, it's... The, the, the best way I've heard it described is the feet you step on today may be attached to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. So just be kind to people. <laughs> like, really only take that aggressive of an approach... If it is A, the only way, and B, you can win by such a wide margin, they do not stand a chance. I'm talking the gap between you is incomprehensible. Like, this is this is not three degrees of separation. This is not I am, six degrees of I am separation. I'm superior or in even every way. Seven, this is like 40 degrees And even of then, if you do that to enough people, that gap closes because, yeah, you're superior to person A and B, and C, and D, all the way through Z31, but are you superior to all of them combined? Mm -hmm. No. Right. <laughs> uh, the Raven Guard's approach was just lock them up. Lock A through Z31, and it's never a problem. We just watch them. It's listen, cool. listen, if we commit violence on everyone, they can't, they can't return it back if we just put them away. If we just, yeah, we just lock them away and watch them forever. Horus loved these guys. <laughs> Because they are, they, they do win battles decisively, and then they they hang on to the straggle. They afterwards. clean up afterwards. It's fantastic. It's so convenient. And so his legion would usually do the full frontal assault. And man, can you imagine how unpleasant it must be? Because every other Primarch will outfox you in some regard. I cannot imagine, because going against Horus feels like you're going against somebody who is materially superior. I see him coming. I've known he's coming. I can't do anything about it. And then the worst thing is Raven Guard now flank you. So it's just like, oh, you are trapped. You are boxed. Yeah, it wasn't great. It was very mean, actually. Horus liked this from a tactical standpoint because it's the perfect yin to my yang. It's great. Those guys were black. Horus back in the day wore white. It worked out great. Uh, Korax was not happy when he discovered this. <laughs> he is Mr. Freedom. He is Mr. Red, White, and Blue. Ba well, black, black, and gray. <laughs> <laughs> and so he actually wound up banishing a lot of the older Raven Guard. Really? Yeah. Re like full on just like get gone yeah there are multiple references to purges huh wow that's something we haven't covered yet he is a man of principles he fights for the little guy he was well he wasn't born under but he was he was raised under a very oppressive rule where people were worked to death with no choice he was the, on the sharp end of that stick always why would he want to be the one on the handle end of that exactly, stick? Exactly. Exactly. He, he 
sees himself as the liberator, as the deliverer, as the savior. These people are who I would fight against normally. I am not teaching them my ways. I am not having them under me. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. I don't think we've encountered a Primarch yet, or at least I haven't. In the span of these videos, who's done that? There's there's a little bit of weed whacking that needs to happen. In well, all I assume of them. I assume Gilliman, just for efficiency's sake, is just like. Mm. No, we have Perturabo, Perturabo. the decimation one in yep. ten. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is the first for, for no reason, by the way. This is for the first, no reason. This is the first loyalist Primarch then that we've seen do this. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, well, Perturabo was loyalist back then. Yeah, but look at him. <laughs> Yeah, but look at him. You're looking at him now. Leave him alone. He was trying his best. Uh, So he took them over, and he took them back to his uh, old home of deliverance and built a massive guard tower. Well, he took over the old guard tower that was used to watch over the people there and renamed it to the Raven Spire. I, I dude, I love it. I love it. I'm so glad I did not know about Warhammer 40K when I was 11 years old. You would have loved it. I would have been a totally different person. You, this would have been your legion. This would have been my legion. This would have been your this legion. This would have been my legion. Uh, the, the whole, because it was a massive industrialized planet, um, they, they retooled it a little bit less mean. It's still very efficient, just no longer requires you to work till death, no option. And their main specialty was now creating special stealth gear for these Raven Guards to use. And they gave them... Really edgy names, mm-hmm. like the Whisper Cutter and the Shadow Hawk. <laughs> I mean, I love them, but everything in 40k wears its name on its sleeve. Yeah. You see the Ultramarines, you see Gilman wearing an, a laurel wreath around his head. And with you know the what he's Caesar about. With Caesar haircut. You know what he's about. And you immediately instantly. know, ah, yes. Guy, guys, Julius Caesar. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that, that's what that is. That's what that is. Yeah. They all wear, I would say maybe pre-heresy Horus. I'm surprised I said that right. <laughs> Was the only one who didn't wear his shtick on his sleeve. Because yeah. he just looks like a guy. It, well, uh, even then, I've seen art of like Horus pre-heresy, and he's like, he's not bald, um, which instantly, good sign. <laughs> but he's got the weird like, eyeball on his chest still and he's got the weird like snake eyeball motif all over him it's just like that that reads as evil he's not evil yet why is he but he's smiling yeah and that just makes it uncanny it's why are you smiling at me anyway uh corvus also started taking in initiates from deliverance and training them in his ways and they took to it Immediately, because they had fought under him. They'd already done this. They've already done the song and dance. It's how they. It's how they won their freedom, frankly. And so he trained them up, and this further caused the divide within his legion because now the the earthborn ones that were still around were really feeling the difference <laughs> because they were the hard problem children, for lack of a better term. And well, that has his favorites now. <laughs> and so. But they, they they still, some did adapt and fit in. Instead of becoming counterinsurgents, they just became regular insurgents. So you take everything you know and reverse it. Should, should, should take, be fine. Yeah, should take pretty naturally. And uh, to this day, they still tend to use those style of tactics. They don't use very heavy armored vehicles. Just because it's really hard to put, like you can't wrap, you can't wrap a tank in bubble wrap and have it be quiet. Yeah, you, you can't you can't put pillows on each tread. They're, they're just... a little bit they're a little bit more subtle and refined when it comes to their tactics. Like mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen art of Raven Guard snipers. Yeah, we don't see that in other legions as much. Well, and I love it because they have this they have this way of communicating in combat, and the way they're described really sells it. If you forget that they're massive men in huge armor, just. Suspend disbelief with me because it's described as these figures slinking from shadow to shadow. If you were not looking carefully, it would look as if a breeze had just adjusted that area. That's it. When they're speaking, they have such a way of doing it. They have this weird sign language as well as just talking quietly enough that it sounds like it's the background noise. That's an insane level of stealth. And by the time you, I mean, I've seen, I've seen the like hand signs, like uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, battle sign language in other sci-fi, which it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I know exactly who did it, but um, 
the so quiet it sounds like the wind on the reeds that's like it's that's, so good that's it, so it, good it, it makes you imagine a clearing and you can just hear birds chirping water running leaves rustling in the wind maybe and then an eight foot tall man's bearing down on you <laughs> And I promise you now, you are not coping. No. You are not coping. It is the school of stealth of, you see them at the last moment, you really drink in what it is, but what can you do? What can you do? Nothing. My favorite thing, my favorite thing, my favorite thing is I just, I'm a couple years late. Uh, I just- Finally, I'd like to add. I just started playing Middle Earth Shadow of War. And my favorite thing is the fact that you can just be sprinting through like a city and then uh, uh, hit right trigger X and then stealth kill something, it looking directly at you. <laughs> if if it's the same level of stealth of just like, well, I saw him. What could I do? If you are parked at a red light, and you see a man over seven feet tall, three feet wide running at you at the speed of Usain Bolt. He then proceeds to rip the passenger door off its hinges and reach a hand for your throat. What are you doing? You. It may as well have been a sneak attack. What can you do? I don't care if you heard boom, 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 boom. You're not doing anything about it. I do not care if you heard all of his armor clattering about. You have about 15 seconds to process this and act there's nothing you're doing. No. You're dead. And so that that and is 50, my... 15 seconds is still pretty, pretty yeah. generous. You could literally it's probably boom, faster boom, boom, than boom, 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 And you're dead. Just the door ripped off hinges, dead. Immediately. And so you may see them at the last moment. It won't matter. It won't matter. And you certainly will not see them. This is something that is hard confirmed, even though they're fairly easy-ish to spot in person. Once they're in an environment, they pick up. They pick it up very quickly. They get a lay of the land very quickly, and they disappear. So you may be able to see. Or it's it's really funny actually because in, in envision Times Square, and yeah, I see the Raven Guard right in front of me. But now zoom out and try and find the Raven Guard in that picture. You're not. It's really hard, especially if you consider he's not out in the middle. He's slinking off in the corner next to the construction overhang so you can't see his full size and you don't know where he is. Even then, we couldn't logic where he'd be. For all you know, he could be in one of the buildings f aiming at his target. He's somewhere. <laughs> yeah, he's moving from shadow to shadow and speaking in a way you can't tell him apart from the taxi cabs passing you by. This is like, this is like where's Waldo in the middle of Candy Cane Lane? Yeah, I... I uh, <laughs> Where's Waldo? But you have to find him before he finds you. <laughs> it, which would be a very fun game. Man, somebody needs to make that be a fun horror game. Because you, you could sp imagine you're on a Miami beach playing first person, and your job is to spot a guy wearing red, yellow, I mean, red, white, red, white, red, white. And he looks very doofy and he's very tall and he has glasses on. And you can't in time. <laughs> And that's the end of your story. I would love that so much. My favorite thing that I've seen, this is a tiny side tangent. My favorite thing that I see, I've seen is like a, it's an old uh, YouTube short. I think I actually saw this on iFunny back in like 2016. It's a dude who would buy Where's Waldo books from bookstores, go home and like perfectly cover up Waldo in different ways in the book. No. And then returned the book to the bookstore. He's ruined people. <laughs> Do you know how stupid I'd feel staring at Where's Waldo for four hours? I haven't found him yet. And now I'm too invested. This has been my whole day. That pe that person has ruined lives. Marriages crushed. Yeah. Childhoods smashed. If if I walked into my house and my kid was crying, I can't find Waldo. Okay, come here. Let me take a look here. And I can't find him within like 10 minutes. Your wife gets home. You were supposed to be preparing the casserole and that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. No, you, if, if I couldn't find Waldo, I'd say, hmm, that's weird. Let's do this after dinner. And then I'd shop Waldo in. I can't be that stupid. <laughs> I, w I, would, I would make Waldo appear. This is not an option. I cannot be that publicly stupid in front of my own child. 
No. I, I just imagine this person staring at a Where's Waldo book, time lapse, his life is falling apart around him, and he's like old and grizzled, and just like his face is starting to like cave in. You can see bones through the skin. And then he looks close enough at one section of the book and sees there's like a, the thinnest slice of paper on the top of the page, and he's just like taking an X Acto knife. Oh God. Oh God, my life, what have I done? I need to call Martha back. Yeah, Martha's dead. Martha, anyway. Uh, as, as part of a compliment to their stealth tendencies, they tend to operate very independently. Uh, you will not see these guys as a large army approaching. Rather, eh, there's a few there, a few there, a few there. And ideally, you won't see them. Ideally, you won't see them at all. Uh, and it does help them disappear. If there's a few there, a few here, a few there. And they're all about insurgency. So you don't need too many of them. You really don't need too many of them to cause a huge problem. Because, again, they don't have to win the war. They just have to screw you over enough that you cannot afford it anymore. It's, it's a much harder game to beat insurgents than it is to be an insurgent. And all of them follow this thing called the trifold shadow, path of shadow, which is basically ambush, stealth, and vigilance. And if you can master all three, then you are guaranteed to win any battle. You know, I can see you before you arrive, I can kill you before you arrive, or you just won't see me. Yeah, you're going to win most battles in that situation. Um, most people are not good at all three. And so usually, like in the case of the Patreon episode, Shrike, he's really good at ambush. So he just stays in ambush forever. And the, it's you have to be truly exceptional to master all three. Obviously, Korax is exceptional. He has mastered all three. But that's just because he's the the bar upon which everyone compares themselves to. He, he probably developed all three. Yeah. Uh, they also love jump packs because, come on. Who doesn't love jump packs, yeah. dude? Yeah. And uh, they... they yeah, they use them for hit and run tactics because again, it works so well for them. Uh, they also have their culture is worn on their sleeve. I was not kidding when they have a lot of very edgy names. Their ranks are called the Master of Shadows, the Shadow Masters, which are different. There are Shadow Wardens, Shadow Killers, Dark Fury Assault Squads, Deliverers, the Black Wings, Shadowborn. Ghost Stalkers, Darkened Blade, Whisper Claws, Dirge Singers. Their weapons are called the Blackout, Ebon's Claws, Raven's Talons, Nihilus, the Sable Trident. It goes on and on and on. You can tell what their gimmick is. They are up there as some of the Space Marines who commit the hardest to the bit, and I cannot help but love it. Down to the emo haircut. They have the full blown bang down swoop. <laughs> the whole nine. Um, they also do have a genetic flaw uh, called the Sable brand, or they call it going ash blind. And all sense of self preservation goes out the window. Is this murderous ego death? Um, not quite. Not they quite. have. A very unstable gene seed, a very unstable blueprint. Uh, and that does lead to them occasionally taking the approach taken by insurgent groups of, I will go down publicly and take all of you with me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it is unpleasant to deal with. They have a whole wing. It's called the Shadow Killers of these guys who are afflicted by this. And fun fact, Korax had a incredible hot streak against Gilliman using them. In, against Gilliman? Yes, because they, they, they used to play uh, war games because it's of fair. They would. Who better to train against? You know, iron sharpens iron. And so they would war game against each other. And Corvus won, I think, twice in a row, which is really rare for Gilliman because his whole shtick is you beat me once, I will fix it. Because... Gilliman has never accounted for space marines who do not care about themselves. That was not something he had mathed in. He expected, he always expected soldiers to at least somewhat care about their own lives, not fanatics. Oh. And so it worked a few times, and then Gilliman fixed it. <laughs> Gilliman patched that. I mean, th that's what Gilliman does. Yeah, that's what he's best at, is beat me once, okay, cool, never again. Never again. 
Uh, they also commit to the freedom gig a lot. Uh, the, it's called the Deliverers. They have weapons called the Oppressor's End. And while the story I told in the beginning that did not happen to poor Stooge, they do do that. There's a whole wing called the Darkened Blades, whose whole shtick is just to liberate oppressed worlds, usually by training them up and then also helping them in every way possible. And this is not just liberating from chaos-controlled worlds. If a gene stealer cult's taken over, they will come deliver it. If the Tao have taken over, you, you know, taken over. It's more just like, hey guys, do you want free trade or something? I don't know. That's still a loss to the Imperium. Cannot be, cannot be, we will not cope with this. Uh, or just if if it's, you know, t the Tyranids are bearing down and it's pretty much over, they will, they will, orcs too. They, they don't care what the problem is. They care that there are people who are being held under something's thumb. And they will stab the thumb, poke the thumb. Yes. Um, they will go through a bunch of training, the usual space marine stuff, with a very, very heavy focus on being sneaky. Uh, in fact, one of the last tests they have to do is catch a small bird native to that planet and then immediately break its neck. And they wear like little trophies. You'll see them. They have tiny bird charms all over them. They are very bird-themed. Yes. Uh, and they are almost always short-staffed, not because of difficulty in training or because it kind of behooves them to not have too many, but because of the heresy. The, uh, yeah. Oh, they, they got pressed into a fine paste. <laughs> their, their game is insurgency and stealth warfare, guerrilla warfare. I don't think Horus cared. That was all out just war they could have been useful the problem is they were one of the legions on istvan 5 and for those of you that don't know it is a horrific incident <laughs> seven legions were meant to go crush what they thought were four traitor legions as it turns out three of those loyal legions were traitors too and so quick team swap seven to four in the worst possible direction. <laughs> it leads to the meanest battle map in all of 40k, one of the worst losses the Imperium has ever taken, and multiple legions being rendered useless and shattered. Yeah. And the Raven Guard were among them. They didn't get a choice. They did not get to sneak about. They were just surrounded immediately. They were put, And they had to fight in open combat. They were put in a barrel. It was... The, at least the salamanders are decent in open combat, you know? At least the the Iron Hands could cope. They've augmented themselves enough. This is really not the Raven Guard's forte. Uh, they, they, this is actively their weakest point. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're in the middle... They're in the middle of a... They're, they're in a barrel, and there's a spotlight shining into the bottom of that barrel. Mm -hmm. And this is before we even get to the fact that they were always fairly short-staffed. Because the, this was Horus's favorite legion. They didn't happen to have a Primarch at the time. So they could take some devastating losses on his behalf. Mm -hmm. And so he, he did use them for tasks they were not good at, resulting in them being really understaffed, even by the time Korax arrived. Huh. Which only got worse by the time the whole heresy rolled around. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is so awful that even the emperor can notice this and gives him just a bunch of stock and just you focus on getting back in this fight because you are irrelevant right now you are completely and utterly useless to me unless you get more people and there he, is all of like 20 of you here please and he sit back and he does he prints out a ton a ton of them and the alpha legion gets involved yeah wow yeah he really got hit with the one two punch yeah and so now that stock is tainted with demon blood and so instead of great space marines like batch one was you get slobbering gibbering and howling monstrosities that chorus had to corvus had to take out with his own two hands <laughs> And those were recruits from his home world oh. who looked to him as the deliverer. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a rough, rough That's ride. That's a really rough go of it. And it is at this point that he locked himself in the top of the Raven Spire and said, 
Nevermore. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's a lot of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's great. That is not a joke. He just went off to somewhere. That is the last thing we heard from him. Nevermore. Maybe he's bullying Lorgar. That's it. But yes, his last word, nevermore. Ugh. And then he left. And to be fair, imagine that week. Oh, that's of, the worst week of my oh life. Oh, God, my, my, my brother, who I was always dubious about, has turned traitor. This is fine. I have six of my other brothers here. Ah, oh, God, they I, have I turned. I actually don't have six of my other brothers here. And most of my sons have died before my very eyes. Oh, great. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Dad, how can I help out? Literally, go away. Here's this stock. Go use it. Get your act together because you're worthless. And so he does. He gets his act together. He prints out one batch. Great. Fantastic. He's he just prints- like, hey, he grabs his drinking buddies and is just like, hey, do you guys want to go gorilla eating with me? Yeah. And then batch two comes out and he has to kill them with his bare hands. <laughs> he, it's a- And this whole time, by the way, the heresy's raging and he can't do a thing about it. No. So I kind of get why he just said nevermore and disappeared. Again, probably bullying Lorgar, but we'll, we'll, we'll see in his episode. Yeah. Uh, up until now, the Raven Guard are still puny relative to every other legion. Makes sense. They got hit with a significant one-two punch. So tiny that when Gilliman decided, we shall split the legions into chapters so no one man ever has this much power again, the Raven Guard didn't mind too much. Because? because A, they were always fairly independent. So cool, we can... This is whatever. And B... There's not that many of them. <laughs> it's not like the Ultramarines where they have 500 successor chapters. It was enough for maybe like one or two? Eh, just, just a couple. Just a couple? Yeah. Just a handful. And for the most part, they just get involved in situations that most Marines would not bother with. They deal with orc wars as they arrive. I've decided not to shout wah at full volume as you should. Instead, channeling my inner David Attenborough. Wah. So they're orc wars. From now on. Uh, and he, he will fight. They That's what they tend to do in the modern lore. A lot of it is actually focused on orcs. Sometimes Tyranids. Man, is it funny when it turns to the Tau. Because the Tau are like, hey, better standard of life. Give me liberty or give me death. You know, they, 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 they get the whole tea in the harbor experience. Ugh. I really love these guys, if you can't tell. <laughs> and a lot of the time you don't have too much written about them because it's less you see them in a big spectacular bombastic way and more you see their results and it's terrifying yeah and effective um i think the, the most interesting development they've gotten post heresy because again they do not get much they have shrike who we covered He's mostly just an orc pub stomper. <laughs> there's plenty of orcs, so there's never a shortage of jobs for him. Uh, they tend to be this unseen force. You see, what well, you don't see, you feel a lot of the time. And to this day, they still wear beaky power armor because k- k- birds. Birds. But birds. I, gotta t- I gotta turn it over to you. Unfortunately, a lot of it has petered out post-heresy for the myriad of unfortunate reasons that <laughs> they have had to undergo. They don't have a lot of people post heresy. They're just like they're they're on they're on the back foot. But what do you think of the resident edge lords? Do the orcs call them sneaky beakies? Oh, for sure. Okay, sweet. I promise you now that I promise you now one orc has. That's all I needed to know. Yeah, sneaky beakies. For sure. <laughs> That's all I needed to I know. I think I think that is what they were they used to call space marines beakies because they all used to have the yeah. little yeah, yeah, so I, I, I know they used to call the like the old power armor with the the beaked helmet the beakies. Yeah, you know, like sneaky beak. Yeah, orcs. but they're not purple, so orcs hate him. Orcs hate this man. Yeah, <laughs> here's why. The orcs hate this simple trick: fighting me for a second, killing me, and then running away. It, it, it's very frustrating for the orcs, but yeah. it leads to them being kind of the perfect thing to. They do are with the them. perfect anti-orc division, right? Because they don't ever give them. They good don't fight. feed the wall. They just come in, do their thing, yeah. leave. They never feed the wall. They just agitate it more than anything else. <laughs> the good thing they, is... They're sitting there edging the orcs. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say mental flashbangs. <laughs> the nice thing is the orcs are becoming more relevant. 
which means their pub stompers will inevitably become more relevant. As Gaz gets bigger and stronger and scarier, one of the best responses to it will probably be the Raven Guard. It'll be the guerrilla warfare that the Raven Guard get because you mm -hmm. will never want to, you, you won't want to fight Gaz in open combat. No, you're just encouraging him, frankly. Yeah. yeah. The we'll best. Just go, oh, this is an awesome fight. Yeah, the best thing you can do is just slowly pick them off one at a time and leave immediately over and over and over and over and over again until the because it is it is a snowball the orcs are this chain reaction that just keeps going and going and going and so if you can just stall it out enough it can self-destruct yeah they can start infighting and then you're done you're finished you've won they've they've fractured so I, I i do seriously hope we hear more about them but that does bring an end to our episode on the raven guard remember your options are the white scars kaifas kane Dark Eldar and the Abhumis. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into this episode and thank you for being you.